Hey there, my name is Sean Shaler, and this past week I purchased a Roxio HD Pro Game Capture device, and I'm also switching back to Camtasia video editing software, which is one I've not used in a while, so I need a refresher. Most importantly, I have a stack of games that I would like to try for the first time because I have this terrible habit of purchasing games that I don't ever actually have time to play. That sentence is a metaphor for adulthood. Today I'm tying all those things together for no particular reason. I'm looking at Sega games for the Wii because the video needed a catchy title, but also because there are several of these games I've been meaning to try. I have a really weird relationship with the Nintendo Wii because I hate motion controls, peripherals, gimmicks, even wireless controllers I don't really like, but somehow the Nintendo Wii hooked me. I think it's comfortably in my top 5 consoles of all time. And for what it's worth, Sega games aren't afraid to try some weird stuff either, so I'm really curious to see what sticks for me. Anyway, I've got like 8 of these things to play and just a few hours to work with, so I'm going to spend about 10-15 to 15 minutes playing each one of these things before making a harsh, insultingly simple judgment about the game on a scale of 0 to 5. Now that does sound pretty harsh I suppose, but I personally rationalize hoarding video games as a hobby, so I do have a fairly low bar. Also I'm not really rating the game's quality. I low-key suck at video games, so I'm definitely not a credible source for that. Instead think of it more as how likely I would be to recommend the game, based on its quality and price and everything else, to somebody who already owns the console. So a 5 means I would recommend the game for every single Nintendo Wii owner, whereas 0 means I would literally never recommend the game under any circumstances whatsoever. I personally try not to keep too many shitty games around my house, so expect a lot of 3s and 4s. And let's get started. The Conduit from High Voltage Software in Sega in 2009 is an FPS that came out not too long after a slew of games from hyper-popular FPS series at what was essentially the height of the genre. If this game were really good and really unique, it might have felt like a breath of fresh air at the time, but just being mediocre like it is probably had the opposite effect. It's kind of forgettable. It's still generally very okay to play, except for the subpar control scheme. I find it really hard to aim with the motion controls, even with the lock-on system, and using motion controls to turn your character left and right feels so unnatural. I think they added Wii Classic controller support for the sequel, but no such luck here. Nothing else about it really gives me strong feelings one way or the other. It's decent and cheap, and I think a lot of Wii owners could enjoy and appreciate the diversity it brings to their collection. I'll say 3 out of 5. The House of the Dead 2 and 3 Return, developed and published by Sega in 2008, is a basic port of both popular arcade games, which are a pair of standard on-rail shooters. If you liked them in the arcade, you'll like them here. I'm personally not big on old light gun games, but the Wii is certainly a good home for that genre, and if I had to pick, I would definitely want to be gunning down zombies in fast-paced co-op. I'm also biased because I love compilation and collection games, these titles that have more than one game on them. A price tag close to $20 as of September 2020 is a little surprising to me, but it's solid and not terribly uncommon, so three more stars for this one. Mario & Sonic at the Olympic Games, developed and published by Sega in 2007, is one of just two games on this list that I had played prior to today. It's a collection of mini-games with an Olympic theme, and it's generally fun in short bursts, despite my personal disdain for mini-games. Everyone's gonna have their favorites, for some reason I really like Javelin and Hammer Throw, but some of the games just seem to be of poor quality here. Table Tennis, for example, is something I generally love in real life and video game form, but the version on Wii Sports Resort seems far better than this one in my opinion. So I'm probably nitpicking because it's totally inoffensive, and it's probably going to appeal to people who like Mario and Sonic, or minigame compilations, or even those old Konami track and field games. It's pretty cheap and easy to get your hands on, so with apologies for feeling repetitive, it's another 3 out of 5. 
Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing from Sumo Digital and Sega in 2010 is a really solid Mario Kart clone. It's just similar enough to Mario Kart that it's easy to make that transition, but it's unique enough that people who like the genre are still going to find reasons to play this game. I like the sequel a little more, which I played on the Vita, but that's probably an unfair comparison because the original, on the Wii at least, really, really wants you to play with the stupid motion controls, which I only ever want to do when I'm playing with friends and when we're all required to be drunk. So while it has its flaws, I would pick Mario Kart Wii over this by a few hairs, but I could actually see an argument favoring this game. I'm teetering between a 3 and a 4 out of 5, but I'm going with 4 stars because this is really good, cheap, and most Wii owners would probably enjoy it. Sonic Unleashed from Sonic Team and Sega in 2008 is like an action platformer that blends several different genres. It has daytime levels with some 2D and 3D segments, and these try to move pretty fast. The nighttime levels where you turn into a werehog are the only part of this game I ever recall hearing anything about prior to purchasing this game. The internet claims they are slower and more action heavy. Honestly, I did not even make it to a nighttime level the game isn't necessarily bad, it's just that I personally don't like anything about it. The blend of genres, slippery controls, twitch reaction gameplay, quick time events, unskippable tutorial, very uninteresting setting and narrative. There's just nothing here for me. I could see someone maybe having fun with it, but I probably would not risk recommending it, so I'm going with two stars. Sonic Colors, developed and published by Sega in 2010, feels more like an appropriate 20 aughts take on a classic Sonic game than Unleashed does. I know I'm alphabetically out of order here, but I played this right after Unleashed, and I'm glad I did because it feels like a decent improvement over Unleashed in basically every way. Remember how Sonic the Hedgehog 2 for the Genesis was full of bright, interesting levels, and you basically only used a D-pad and one button? Colors feels far more like that, just with like a mix of 2D and 3D. I really don't have much else to say about this. If you like classic Sonic and you have a Wii, you'll probably enjoy it. I'm on the fence again between a 3 and a 4, but I'm actually going with 4 stars because this is a good, fairly unique experience on the Wii that you can find cheap with a little patience. Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz, developed and published by Sega in 2006, is the second game on this list I've played before today, and coincidentally was the second game I ever played on the Wii. I suppose you'd call it a platform game, but where you technically control the platform itself to move the player around in the Monkey Ball, instead of actually controlling the player. It's honestly easier just to go play any Monkey Ball game than it is to describe it, and this one is like that, but with motion controls. My dexterity is atrociously ill-suited for such fine motion controls, similar to how much I suck at the conduit, and I did not care for the boss battles here personally, but I still found this game the hardest to put down of any game I played today because of the addicting core gameplay and surprisingly the minigames. It honestly has maybe my second favorite collection of minigames on the Nintendo Wii outside of Wii Sports Resort. So I find myself yet again between a 3 and a 4 out of 5 because it's a really fun game, kind of in a niche genre, but it's so cheap that I'm going with a 4. I just think most Wii owners should have this game. Super Monkey Ball Step and Roll, developed and published by Sega in 2010, is a somewhat disappointing follow-up to Banana Blitz, but I don't think it's nearly as bad as the internet's poor reviews suggest. It's more simplistic and a little worse in basically every way. A little worse. Except that I for one did not miss the boss battles at all. I haven't messed with the balance board, but even if that functionality is awful, I'm not sure it necessitates the low ratings this game constantly seems to get. It's cheap and it's not bad. It's a 3 out of 5. So that's really all I have in the Sega Wii games category. I know there's nothing too expensive or too exciting in there, but that's fine. They're all exactly good and inexpensive enough that I like having them on my shelf. Except for Sonic Unleashed, which I did kind of hate. I know I'm missing a lot of stuff like The Conduit 2, House of the Dead Overkill, 
Mad World, some Puyo Puyo games, some other Sonic games, some tennis stuff, even some Marvel games, I think. But I have what I have. I'm extremely grateful for you hanging out for a few minutes. I hope you didn't hate it, and I'll see you next time.